Thank you very much for being uh, here with us today. Please tell me your name and uh, the firm that you are working yeah. on. Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Ashley Trick. I'm with Capital Six Eagle. So um, how did you get into tech? And uh, tell me a little bit of your origin story. Yes. So I've been a nerd since I was a small child. We have photos of me in diapers typing away on a computer. I'm not sure what I was typing, but I definitely kind of just always gravitated um, that way. So I spent a long time in traditional tech. I was building iPhone apps for about 13, 14 years um, and kind of stumbled into crypto. This was not really the intention. Um, I was dating somebody and we had a Valentine's Day. This would have been 2014, February of 2014. Valentine's Day, we could only exchange gifts you could buy with crypto, which was really challenging at the time. Um, he cheated. He'd already found a flower shop. It was completely unfair. Oh, I thought uh, overstock supplies. <laughs> right. <laughs> I got plane tickets. That worked too. Um, but it was definitely unfair. So that, that's kind of how I stumbled into crypto. Um, and if I'm being honest, I sort of bought some, was like, I'll buy just enough to pay attention and then completely forgot about it for quite some time. And uh, dove back in in, in 2018, um, met some friends in the space and kind of realized that maybe they're onto something here. Um, yeah, and then I got my job in VC about six months ago. So I will preface this interview with that, that I've been a VC for six months. These are my opinions now. If you watch this in two years, I'll probably disagree with everything I just said to you. Tell me about uh, your uh, firm and uh, what is your investment thesis? Yeah, so fund is called Capital Six, uh, founded by Peter Vestness, who's a super OG in the crypto space, brilliant cryptographer. I'm so lucky to be learning from him. Um, so we are an east-west fund. So we have an office in Beijing and an office in Seattle. Um, and our investment thesis is really just how do we bring crypto and blockchain technologies to the masses, right? We are looking for things that bring mass adoption, that get people involved in the space, that make it less of a scary place to be. Uh, so uh, the uh, fund that uh, you uh, deployed mm -hmm. uh, participated uh, in equity and the tokens, how do you... Um, invest in, in crypto projects? It's, it's about 50-50. We think it's kind of a good hedge to do a little bit of both, um, mm -hmm. but it really depends on the project. Um, and what is uh, the, the check size that you typically deploy? So we're kind of all over the place as far as that goes. Um, minimum check is about 100K. That's kind of what it's worth to, you know, to spend the time to do the DD for it. Um, largest check size right now, I think, is 1.5 million. Just back up a step too. A lot of the times if the check's only 100,000, it's because that's all we can get in right? The projects are so hot right now that that's all the space they'll give me. Often, I'd like to do quite a bit more than that, but those are the ones where they're, it's a favor, they're breaking me off a piece of something really juicy that I want into. And uh, uh, of course, um, depending on the size of, of your fund, mm -hmm. uh, the decision process has to be uh, relatively quick. You don't, Absolutely. you, you cannot spend uh, a, a long time making a $100,000 nope. decision. No. So, what is your decision process look like? Well, not, so we all have a, a fair amount of discretion as far as any, you know, anyone within the investment committee can write a check as long as it's below a certain size. Mm -hmm. um, so I have the discretion to go ahead and say, I really like this project. They're going to let me in. It's only 100K. I'm going to go ahead and do this mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, if it's a larger check size, we have an investment committee. We have a weekly call um, and everyone has to agree. It has to be unanimous. Mm -hmm. um, so as uh, time goes on, um, how do you think uh, your focus of attention will, will shift, uh, maybe geographically, maybe it will become more vertical uh, across all the opportunities that uh, uh, blockchain represents. I really, I hate the idea of us getting too siloed. I really don't want to do that. Um, but I do think there are definitely some emerging markets that make a lot of sense. Um, I'm looking at a lot of stuff that's going on in Africa right now. I think that's such a, it's so ripe for opportunity right now that I think that could be a much larger part of our portfolio than it currently is. But that's something I'm paying a lot of attention to. Um, I had the, the, the chance of uh, talking to a very successful uh, VC investor uh, just a few months ago, and he was excited to tell me that he actually signed the first check uh, with a team that he has never met uh, physically mm -hmm. in person. And I told him, wow, welcome to the 21st right. century. We've all been doing this for quite some time. Welcome to the party. So when you talk about Africa and projects in Africa, do you think that, I don't know, you will need to open an office in Lagos or, or 
uh, will you be able to conduct business uh, digitally to make investment decisions there as well? I actually sort of like the idea of a decentralized team in general. Um, I'm the only one in our San Francisco office right now. Uh, but I, I don't think, I think, you know, part of what the good that's come out of this pandemic is that everyone's on Zoom now, right? I don't need to hop on a plane to go meet an entrepreneur somewhere, nor do they. Um, so I think the fact that, you know, we're all on Zoom now makes life a whole lot easier. The uh, uh, value added that investors need to bring to the table today is clearer than ever. Um, it has always been the case that uh, each uh, firm wanted to represent themselves as being value added. Sure. But whether they were able or not to deliver on that is another question. Mm-hmm. The uh, value that uh, you bring uh, in addition to money to projects, mm-hmm. uh, how would you characterize that? So I think we have a few things going for us. Um, I think the fund in general, like I said, was started by an amazing cryptographer. He's fantastic when it comes to helping teams maybe re-architect a project or figure out what's going on there. Um, we all have engineering backgrounds, which is, makes us sort of unique. So we're happy to kind of jump in there and get our hands dirty and help where we can. Um, like I say, I personally have a lot of connections um, to tech press. So I'm really good at helping get get some things moving, get the, you know, get the word out there for things that we've got going on. Um, and we have some really good connections with the exchanges. So mm-hmm. that's kind of our, our major. And, you know, being a, a woman in, in the space, I get invited to speak at a lot of things, right? I get invited to meet new people in, in amazing places that we maybe wouldn't have gotten exposure before. Um, I did want to go back to that, and that is what we started with. Um, it has been the case that uh, uh, women were and still are underrepresented, not only um, uh, among a, a larger group of um, uh, developers and engineers in general, but especially in, in VC. Uh, the percentages uh, used to be small single digits. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Um, how do you feel that uh, your position and, and your role and your, your activities can help uh, other women as well? I think, I, I think I said this to you earlier, I really feel like this is sort of my calling, is getting women and other minorities involved in the space, whether it's on the VC side or whether it's on the technical side. Um, and I think a lot of it just starts from education, right? And, and making it feel like a warm, safe place for them when they get there, right? Mm-hmm. There, there's definitely been... Some things that have happened in, in the space over the years that kind of felt like a boys club, right? Mm-hmm. It, was, mm-hmm. it was a little tough to, to want to join that. Mm-hmm. And I think if we can make it a little bit softer, a little bit gentler, then more women are going to be inclined to, to want to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, you mentioned education, which mm-hmm. is um, seen as a vertical, but actually I see it as a, as a horizontal because it supports every other uh, component mm-hmm. um, and and uh, as a matter of fact rather than education i like uh, to use the word learning mm-hmm. education is what other people do to you mm-hmm. learning is what you love to proactively do yourself mm-hmm. absorbing knowledge that then you can you can apply um, do you think that uh, uh, blockchain uh, and crypto can play a role in uh, bringing uh, education to uh, minorities, to women in these areas uh, in a kind of a catalytic effect where learning about crypto enables them to be active and participate and emancipate themselves even further. Absolutely. And that's something that I've been doing a lot of actually recently is kind of going back to, to my female friends or my people who have not been involved in crypto in the past and saying, hey, you guys are really missing out on something, right? This is very cool. And I think once you get people engaging with it, right, you get someone to, to you know, create a wallet, right? And they, you send them a little bit of crypto and they see it going up and up and they get excited and they start doing their research. And, you know, I just had a girlfriend the other day who finally read the Satoshi white paper and she had her light bulb moment. And it was just, it was this incredible experience. And she's just been peppering me with questions ever since. And she's getting really engaged. And I think that's always a ch- The first thing is just, just getting them to pay attention. But once they're there, it's kind of hard to get them away. And I think what that creates long term is going to be incredible. Um, crypto uh, is uh, by definition inclusive because uh, the barriers to entry are non-existent. Mm-hmm. Uh, you only have to be curious 
take the first step and then there is a very natural self-selection process if you uh, are aligned with your talents and passions and skills uh, it is catalytic it is accelerating so um, how do you feel about the increasing waves of adoption that we are seeing and, and we are not at uh, 8 <laughs> billion people yet so there. there is plenty mm -hmm. plenty of, uh, of growth opportunities uh, still uh, do you think that like the founder of your firm, those of us who have a certain um, degree of, of missionary zeal should uh, keep the alignment uh, of the original values that uh, Bitcoin represented always present or we can take a step back and, and have the waves of newcomers take it to wherever they want. I think it's a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B, right? I think you can kind of do both. I like, I like to think of Peter was he was sort of my crypto ambassador, right? Um, I met him many years before I worked for him, and and I did the same thing my girlfriend's now doing to me, and I just peppered him incessantly with crypto questions for about four years. Anytime I was going to buy anything, I'd be like, "Have you heard about this? What do you think about this?" And he'd say good, bad, send me the white paper, whatever it was. Um, and so I think having kind of the old guard there to kind of help get people involved, I think this is imperative. Um, I think that to your earlier point, there's a lot of education that needs to happen. A lot of things people don't know. You know, you don't know what you don't know in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's really, really essential. But I also think, you know, things are going to happen in ways that we never expected, right? And I think that's the beauty of these new waves coming on. And so I think we should, they should have a little freedom to kind of run amok a little bit. And I think that's how innovation happens. And, and of course, uh, investors have to be ready exactly for that kind of experimentation mm -hmm. because when uh, unsuccessful, uh, you write the investment off, uh, when successful, that is where value added really derives. Absolutely. Uh, now, at the... Uh, boundaries of that experimentation, there are some critical components which are especially um, vivid in crypto that concern regulatory issues. So how do you feel both about the role that uh, uh, startups uh, must play unavoidably mm -hmm. in pushing these boundaries pushing the envelope, of course. and uh, the role that investors uh, have to play as as, as guardians uh, of of that investment. Right. I think. I mean, I think first and foremost, failure. I like I like failure. That's how you that's how you learn, right? There's kind of a fail fail win sort of cycle that happens for most entrepreneurs. Um, but I think we're there to kind of help mitigate that as much as possible, right? We've we've seen this over and over and over again. We've seen the problems that our startups run into. And so that's why my calls with my portfolio companies are regular and important, right? Is it's, hey, have you guys thought about this? Or we just heard about this team that's having that problem. Are you running into that? How have you solved for that? Here's what they did. Um, and I think us being able to be there for them is because I think they get a little bit stuck in their own box, right? And they're not maybe paying attention to everything else that's going on. So I'm here to help with that. Ashley, good luck uh, with Thank your you. uh, new uh, trajectory, <laughs> your, your new path. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to meet you again uh, in uh, a year or two. Oh, I'm sure you'll see a lot of me. I will be around. And, uh, and uh, everything that you will have accomplished by then. Thank you so much.